Mike and I have Kenji out here. I mean, under the night yesterday and out here today. I tell you, he's a trooper and he's a warrior. Um, but uh, it's always good. Obviously, anytime you have your leader in the building, able to uh, conduct practices, conduct film rooms, conduct meetings, um, and the more that we can stay in the norm and closer to uh, you know just the rhythm that we've had all year is great. Hey, Mike, there's so much familiarity between you guys. You you know, plenty of guys who work who work here, work there, vice versa. Division rivals, you play each other a lot. How does that play into this series here? Um, I think if anything, you, you kind of you kind of know a little bit of the intricacies, not to go, but you kind of know what uh, Coach Malone, obviously having worked with him, myself and Pinch being on his staff, you kind of know what he likes more end of game, kind of as the game's going on, what he's thinking. Even to the point, I'm sure they're the same way, but you can tell um, if you watch our bench, we can probably stand up knowing that a timeout is coming. Uh, it's just So it's just more of the intricacies there. Um, as far as the players go and all that type of thing, I don't know how much advantage you have there as we've played these guys so much, so it's probably the same thing. But I would just say more from the coaching staff. And again, just as much as we know about um, Coach Malone, obviously Ryan Saunders knows these players very well, knows these uh, these our staff members working with Pablo and um, and Kevin Hanson, all that type of thing. So I think more on the, the coaching side, you might think that what guys or adjustments they may make, not only in game, but from game to one to game two. It seems like, like a disciplined maturity of been like where this team's greatest leaps have been this year. Denver obviously takes advantage of any lapses. Is this a good benchmark to see exactly how far you guys have come there? Yeah, great call because uh, we had some video today even from the sense of like, you know, if every time that you complain about a call or you get the lag time there, Nicola is probably the best in the league as far as getting the ball out, even after makes. Um, that only being said, I think, and there's been video footage that we show them where the guy, the, the ball boy or whoever, is out sweeping up the court and they're taking it out and getting it up the floor. So just a matter of fact, there, there can be no lag time. And the attention to detail, we did a great job with it in Phoenix, I thought, but even more so this series with how they take advantage of it. And even dropping the ball and rolling it, just little things that, you know, be, be alert, be high alert, pick up a little bit more full court so that they can't take away those precious few seconds in that time of need. Uh, with uh, in the, the Sun series, it was it fit a little bit better to do four wings at one big, and, and you guys often lead into that. And this series is more of the two big look, right? Yeah. And you kind of it seems I've been like cultivating the ability to to do both of those things all, all season. What's gone into that process of like, I, making that happen? Yeah, I think a couple things is um, from the defensive side of it. I think what's really helped us a lot is the fact that. Um, just like when we got Rudy, I think we found out that Rudy can guard Smalls much better than what a lot of people thought, including us. And so now you, you feel a lot more comfortable with Rudy out there essentially guarding anyone. And then more so with the two bigs, it's okay, well, if Rudy's guarding that guy that may be a, a smaller size, now where do we put Cat? And I think that uh, you saw last series, just the trust in Cat and the job that he did on Durant, able to put him there, which really nullified some of the stuff that Beal was able to do because we could move Ant to him. So on the defensive side, that's where it's been good. And we've mixed in a little bit more zone. But then, um, and then offensively, we're just so, I mean, lucky to have both Nas and Cat because essentially they are, they're smalls. You know, I mean, I mean, the way they shoot the basketball, when I say smalls, and what that does is the fact that they're both almost 40% from three, the gravity that they pull, guys, you can't sag off or not defend them. So I think that's where we've been able to play both bigs, even when teams are small at both ends of the floor. Seems like Ant is kind of owning the national spotlight right now. Like, why do you think that has happened? Why do you think people have gravitated to him so much? And how do you think you kind of came with that additional attention? Yeah, I think one, I think that the people gravitate to him because he's just, he's a likable, likable dude. I mean, everything you see, I think that they like the way he plays the game. He plays hard. He's obviously very athletic. He's a very dynamic player, getting downhill. So all those things and the fact that second time all-star. But um, I think the way that he has accepted it for a 22-year-old, I mean, you don't like the term old soul, but it just seems like, I mean, he's been through a lot in his life. He's been around a lot of, you know, some situations. He's grown up quickly. And I think that he's been able to handle that. And he's a, just the way his personality is, he's a very self-deflecting, um, you know, he's, yes, he's, he's vocal, but at, at his soul, he's a, he's a guy, a humble guy too. I mean, it's funny how he is, but, um, and he just, uh, he doesn't change. He is who he is. And I think any time that you're not putting on a front or you're not fake, you don't have to change who you are, whether you're in front of the media or you're out doing commercials or playing the game. He's, he is, Anthony Edwards is who he is. He knows who he is. And I think that's why he's able to accept and handle this so well. Is that kind of a weird combination to have somebody who definitely thinks they're the best at anything, but also 
does have like a humble tone. Yeah, because I mean, I've known that. I mean, <laughs> I've been around some very good ones, obviously, throughout the years, and you know, I mean, and uh, but the the way that he accepts it and knows, and his and the way he he his swagger with it all and everything, but the fact that he still doesn't push people away, and there's obviously a big difference. Everybody talks about between confidence and arrogance, and and he's um, he's just a very very confident person, and he puts in the work, and he and he trusts his abilities, and and that's plenty. Tim told us that it's when, not if, a smart front office realizes Mike and Nori needs to be a head coach. When, when you hear that, just does it put a big smile on your face? Well, I think Tim is probably the smartest person we all know in the <laughs> building, so if he's saying it, no, I'm just kidding. Um, you, you know, um, I appreciate that. Obviously, it does put a smile on your face, but um, at the end of the day, and I mean this in all sincerity, and I'm not trying to downplay anything, but I mean, I've been very, very lucky to be in this league for 26 years and never have to look for a job, in all honesty, I've been able to go and to be around this. Uh, the, the one main difference would be, can you run your own program? Can you call your own timeouts, draw up your own plays? And then, you know, you're actually the end all be all as far as with the coaching decisions. That's where the difference lies. But um, I appreciate that. It was very nice of, of Tim to do. But I will say that the work, you know, I, I haven't lost sleep because I'm worried about Denver. I lose sleep because I think it's awful what happened to Finchie because here's a guy that's worked his butt off too. And we're in the second round together, his first time as a head coach. And, for him not to be able to do it full force is what you just don't want to let him down. That's the most important thing to me. Mike, when it comes to Nicola, how hard is it to get to step ahead of him? Is it just a matter of trying to keep up with him? Um, I think Nicola's, I mean, we've all seen him, the way he plays the game. The game moves in slow motion for him. And, he, and, and I think the one thing that Nicola does is he always makes the right play. And so to, in order to stay a step ahead of someone like that, and this is going to sound silly, but I, I, I would never say it's easier, but you know what he's going to do. And what I mean by that is if, if you double, he's going to pass it. If you let him, not let him score, but if you say, hey, we're going to play you straight up and force you to score, then he's going to do that. So he will take whatever you give him, he's, and then you just have to decide if how you want to not how you want to lose, but how you want to beat them. We want to beat them by making other people make the shots or by Nicola taking, you know, which that happened the last time we played him. You know, hey, we're going to let Nicola score a little bit. Well, he went 16 for 20 and he scored 41 and you lose the game anyways. But back to your question, he's as good as he's as good as good there is in the game. Everything's very, very slow. But the one thing he always does is he makes the right play. So what I'm saying, that is you know what he's going to do. If we do this to him, this is exactly what he's going to do. And that gives you a little bit of advantage because sometimes you might be somebody like, well, I don't know what the heck he's going to do. Like, I mean, God bless Ant. Ant's one of those guys. Okay, well, you double him. Well, shoot, he might throw, make the right play. He just might run around it. He might, you know, so that's more difficult in my mind than trying to get ready for somebody like that than Nicola where you say, look, if we double off the passer, he's going to throw it right back out, and we just got to be ready to re rotate. If you, if you double from underneath, he's going to look to the corner skip. So you kind of know what he's going to do. It's just the problem is a lot of times he does it better than how you can guard it. You can probably look at Jamal's stat lines and tell if Denver won the game a lot of times. What, yep. what about him is most difficult to contain? Because obviously it's like, hey, limiting him is how you win the series, and how do you go about doing that? So yeah, and, and you've obviously done your research, but like you say, I think in wins, he's 46 from three, and losses, he's 31, and their losses, he's 16 points, and their wins, he's 23, so obviously he drives winning, and even in when he's not having a, a good shooting night, the one thing I do know about Jamal Murray is down the stretch of games, you know that in those clutch moments, like you see him against the Lakers, he makes two game winners, and really wasn't shooting it great before the game, so what we have to do with him, he's very good. Um, at rejecting pick and rolls and taking any advantage of him there. So we got to make sure we keep him going one way. We got to make sure we pick him up and make him work. We can't just let him walk the ball up the floor. Again, they, they aren't been playing a whole lot of their bench. So if we can wear those guys down and then baby those those 16 foot jumpers that he's shooting at the end of the game, he doesn't have legs, they come up a little bit short. So make sure that we make him work continuing to throw different bodies at him, whether that's Nikhil, whether that is Jaden, and whether that is Ant. But at the one thing we just got to make sure is be physical with him, make him feel this like they always talk about saying, and just nothing easy for him. And Nikhil did a great job last year. You can tell at the end of games that like, he was exhausted. So like, you mentioned throw multiple bodies. Like, how big of an advantage is that to be able to keep two guys sharing the um, three? I mean, it's huge. And I think, like you say, I mean, with Jaden and Ant, and you throw Nikhil, we saw him do it against Shea in the play-in game against Oklahoma City. That um, and it's, you saw him with all the deflections. I think he was leading the NBA in deflections in the playoffs against Phoenix. So when you have those three guys on the perimeter, and essentially it's just wave after wave, what that does is it wears down Jamal, but it also lets those guys rest a little bit. I mean, there's nothing better than being able to get Ant off of him, so that you know 
Ant has his legs a little bit better. You'd have no worries if Jaden needs a break to take him out, put Nikhil in, let Nikhil guard him. And then the other thing is I even think you could put Kyle Anderson on him. Kyle Anderson's a guy with long arms, knows how to play. So uh, having all those different options, that's the main thing as you look at this series compared to last year. We didn't have Jaden. You know, Kyle, we didn't have the last game. and uh, but So I think that's some of the big differences that you'll see this year. Thanks, Michael. All right. All right. Face the lead. Damn, we started off strong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no softballs here. Uh, okay. And like this last week, he's all over national media, NBA socials, that stuff. How do you think he's equipped to kind of handle that, that extra tension that just kind of continues to see the uh, I think he, I think he just has a, a focus mentality in the game of basketball. So. All of us, we're going to keep him accountable. We're going to keep him focused. But for him personally, he's already a step ahead. I think that his focus to the game of basketball, his love for the game of basketball, is uh, something that will keep him uh, his head straight. Carl, there's so much familiarity between your two teams, uh, division rivals. You have guys that work there. They have guys that, that worked here. Like, How does that play into this matchup and just seeing them again with, with how well you seem to know each other? Uh... You know, it, it's just only right, you know, do it the Minnesota way, take the toughest path to get to a championship. So, um, you know, we played in a, a tremendous, explosive, highly offensive, rebinded team in Phoenix who was really good and has had our number all year and we found a way to win. So now this second round, we got to go against <laughs> guys who are playing at an extremely high level, an extremely disciplined level that they just showed against the Lakers. And we have to go there and uh, find a way to first two games go over there without the home court advantage this time around so you know just got to play our best we got to uh, be disciplined stay emotionally uh, disciplined in the game as well and find a way to win. Carl, what is, what is Nikita meant to you guys this year? A lot, a lot. Um, I, he's been tremendous. He's been one of our best defenders, been one of our most clutchest players and also is a uh, when we really needed uh, our team to get disciplined and calm down, he's been the one a lot of times in that uh, in those actions. So, Kill's been tremendous for us. Uh, I can't I can just say we could be here all day talking about the great things he does for our team. Uh, we're just super blessed to have him. What's it been like for you to take on big defensive assignments? Durant that series, maybe on the way up this series. Maybe. <laughs> I'm guessing. I'm just trying not to presume. Right. You I tell like me. that. I like that. Um, it's awesome to get a chance to go against, to compete against the best, and especially guys who are some of the best offensive players we'll have ever seen. So to be able to go out there and compete against them, um, it, it's awesome. So I, I always love the, the chance to go out there and, and earn my respect. Just like sheer size, Carl, it's like going from like welterweight to heavyweight. Mm -hmm. um, what is that adjustment like for really totally two entirely different players? Just be like Roy Jones, just go out there and find a way. So. Um, I'm happy that I get a chance, like I said, to go out there and play defense against some of the best offensive players in this league right now and that's ever been in this league and uh, go out there and compete against the best. Kat, it seems like the whole basketball world is finally starting to wake up about Anthony Edwards. What makes him such a special leader for you guys and what are some of the characteristics that stand out? Uh, just his character, just who he is, his personality. Uh, he does a great job of... Uh, making everyone comfortable around him. He's obviously a jokester, so uh, making everyone laugh. Uh, we just appreciate his presence. How do you think he goes about hearing all the comparisons about him and MJ and, you know, the type of level he's at right now? <laughs> uh, I would guess for me, if I was him, I would say that's pretty cool. Uh, but I know for us as his teammates, we all love to uh, play on that narrative with him, so <laughs> it's pretty fun. Carl, when you... Uh you signed your contract extension. Rudy had just been acquired, and you talked about, I'm still kind of like a center, like we're going to split it a little bit. That's shifted. You're guarding KD. You're playing more I'll be damned, like right? That. Right, yeah. Like, yeah. So can you just kind of walk through like that? I don't know, was that 18 months? Your thought process on you positional. Um, just willing to do whatever this team needs me to do and this organization needs me to do. So I've been willing to do that since day one when I stepped in here. and. 2015 and um, continue to do that for every single day after so um, just the team needed me more to move to the forward position and it needed me to uh, be able to even defend at a higher level and, and I, I needed to be willing to do that and since day one I've always been willing to do what's best for this organization with this team so uh, did what I had to do worked on my game worked on my body so I could be the player that we need me to be a little more center in this series 
whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter. I could be a center one moment, I could sub in and be a power forward. The next moment, I could be a small forward and three big, three big man lineup. So, whatever it takes to win, uh, I'm willing to do. Carl, given given the defense that you guys play on a, on a nightly basis, do, does that maybe lessen some of the pressure you put on yourself coming into a playoff situation? Is maybe less than other points in your career, whether it be like five years ago or two years ago, even. Uh, I mean, it's still the same. I just you gotta go out there and you gotta perform at a high level. Uh, gotta find ways to help my team win, and, and every single night I, I'm presented with a different challenge. I think those other years it was a, it was a different challenge, but it was consistent. And now I have every single night it could be a game where it may not be me for going for 28. It may be me needing just 10 points, but being super disciplined in that approach and being willing to do that and not let ego or pride get in the way. Play defense at a high level, pass the ball. Uh, be aggressive in my playmaking. So uh, every day has presented a new challenge to me, uh, all four games, and I've been willing to accept what uh, the defense gives me and willing to accept the role I needed to play so we could have uh, the best chance to win. Based on the sacrifices you made, just what's the satisfaction level that, you know, nine years, right? And this is your yeah. first time in the second round. I mean, ex I mean it's extremely, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely happy. I couldn't be happier for us. I couldn't be happier for this organization. And um, like you said, it's, Selfish, like personally, I'm just happy that I've uh, finally got to that second round. You know, it's been a long time coming for me and for nine years being here and all the ups and downs and trials and tribulations and the ebbs and flows that have come with being uh, here for nine years. Uh, I'm just happy to uh, have one of those years where the light shines a little more than usual. Carl, yeah. this team has grown a lot in terms of discipline and maturity, mm -hmm. maturity this year. A matchup like Denver, is that kind of like the ultimate measuring stick to see how far absolutely, you guys come in? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, defending champs, you know, you got to go out there and you got to play to the best of your abilities. Uh, they have the champ championship pedigree. They got guys who've almost all of them, you know, roughly have been there and winning a championship with them. With some new faces, but pretty much the same core, the same group of guys. So um, they've shown their discipline. They've shown their. Um, their ability to win close games, especially recently. So um, we have to be willing to play for 48 minutes at a high level. Extremely disciplined basketball, emotional maturity has to be shown at all given times. And um, just got to play the game of basketball that we've been playing this whole year. Great defense that translates to our offense. And when we get a chance uh, to play offense, you know, uh, be very efficient in that in that process. Kat, you talked about them playing in close games. From your point of view watching film, how is Denver able to execute so efficiently in late game situations, especially in the fourth quarter? Discipline. You know, uh, I feel like for nine years I've been in the league, so I've got to see a lot of different teams that have been really good, and they kind of give you that uh, old school San Antonio Spurs flavor, you know. Um, game gets close. Uh, it looks like they're playing it still in the first quarter. You know, the execution and discipline they show uh, is second to none. So um, we got to, like I said, we got to be willing to play for 48 minutes. Uh, we've had moments in the Sun Series where we had some slippage, where it didn't look like, you know, we were playing all 48 minutes, maybe, you know, 44, 45 minutes. But with a team like this, you can't afford to have those three minutes, even two minutes of, uh, of slippage where you're not playing disciplined basketball and because they're just so good at capitalizing on those moments of um, of, uh, of just not a weakness, but slippage in our in our offense or defense. Carl, what have you nice appreciated the most about Tim Connolly just since he's taken over and built this team? Um. I just I just appreciate him believing in himself and his talent and his mind and, and building this team out for us to have the best chance to win and trusting that we would make this work and he's been a motivating factor for all of us of always giving us words of encouragement and words of advice of how we could be the best versions of ourselves and then how can this team as a whole be the best we could be and um, you know he's given us great advice that's worked out tremendously well. Carl, to you and Last Rudy one, and Nas and Kyle, like, have you sat down and kind of talked about the, the Jokic match? It seems like you guys are always going to kind of be working in tandem there. Like, how does how does the approach to like kind of planning for that go between you guys as players? Um, we've had conversations for sure. I mean, but like you, I think someone said, you know, we now in our division, we've seen them a, a ton of times this year, and in so many different ways, where all three of us were, at, where me, Nas, and Rudy were out, we're all together in the game. I'm out. Uh, just the difference off of the back to back being tired. You know, it, it, it's so many different situations we've already had with them this year. So um, obviously we've had conversations about 
this series and guarding Jokic and you know when you're guarding someone that great and also Jamal Murray and the rest of their guys who are really really good players and great players in their own regards um, you know we know we, we know we have a very big challenge in front of us and uh, I, I'm happy that uh, all of us are just locking back in after the Sun series getting that hunger back in and that determination back and obviously obviously we uh, accepting that challenge so we want to go out there play against the best and uh, Obviously, we're going to put our best foot forward and hope everything works out. Thanks,